excited to welcome someone who can truly share the benefits of what we all do in the Relay Nation. Coming to us from Atlanta, Georgia, please join me in giving a California welcome for Associate Professor in the Department of Biology at the Georgia State University, American Cancer Society funded researcher, Susanna Greer. Well, hello, California! Well, it is awesome to be here today. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you, the volunteers of the American Cancer Society, on behalf of the researchers of the American Cancer Society. I want to talk just for a few minutes about what I do, the American Cancer Funded Research that is performed in my laboratory. See, I haven't always been a cancer researcher. Now, don't worry, you haven't made a mistake in bringing me all the way from Atlanta, but the ACS played a big role in why I do cancer research, so I want to share that with you. After I received my PhD in microbiology and immunology, I began my career at the University of North Carolina in the Leinberger Comprehensive Cancer Center, but I worked in the lab of a very famous immunologist. Her name is Jenny Ting, and on top of studying cancer, there was a large part of her research group that studied autoimmune disease, and that's the research group that I fell into. I actually worked on multiple sclerosis. And one of the questions that we spent a lot of time addressing is, why does the immune system, which is supposed to protect us from infection, like from viruses and bacteria, why does your immune system turn on you in autoimmune disease and attack your own tissues? Now, when I started my own lab at uh, Georgia State University, I continued to think about some of the proteins that we had studied when I was in Jenny Ting's lab. And one of the things that we had discovered was that there was a family of proteins called the major histocompatibility complex. So I'm just so, call that MHC, just like we say ACS. So the MHC family of proteins is overexpressed. There's too much of it in autoimmune tissues. The immune system is tricked into targeting those tissues and attacking them. And so when I started my own lab, I continued to think about the MHC proteins. But one of the things that I thought was, if the immune system is turned on too strongly to attack tissues in autoimmune conditions, couldn't it be that in cases like tumors, there is a lack of an immune response, and could it be a role played by those MHC proteins? And so I set about um, to do a little bit of preliminary research with my new graduate students, and I'm proud to say that a little over three years ago, we submitted a grant to the American Cancer Society. We didn't have a whole lot of data, but I really, really thought that we were right. And the American Cancer Society, I'm proud to say, thought we were right too, and took a chance on us and made an investment in someone who worked on autoimmunity but had an idea that might be related to cancer. And so in those little over three years, we have now begun not one, not two, but three cancer-driven projects in my lab. We studied the role of suppression of MHC in metastatic melanoma. We studied the role of suppression of MHC in metastatic breast cancer. And two months ago, we began a new project studying the role of suppression of MHC in chemo-resistant ovarian cancer. So I'd like to think the American Cancer Society made a good investment. Not only do you now have me, a career cancer researcher, but all of the students, all of the postdocs that train in my lab would have never been exposed to cancer research, and now they are becoming cancer researchers in their own right. And I truly believe that the work done in my lab is going to change the way we diagnose, the way we treat, and I eventually think we are going to contribute to curing cancer. So thank you. So now, after all of that, after all of that, you may not think that you, the volunteers of the American Cancer Society, have a lot in common with me, a researcher of the American Cancer Society, but I'm here to tell you we do. We have a problem that we share, and that is our inability to see the forest for the trees. Now, I think we have different trees, so just hear me out. As a researcher, my trees are things like we spend weeks planning experiments. Um, suggesting hypothesis-driven experiments that we would like to test out. And those experiments may be because of a technical problem or an instrument failure or a lab mouse that refuses to cooperate. Um, those experiments fail. 
or we spend months and months generating data and putting our best efforts into manuscripts and we submit those manuscripts and they are reviewed and come back with crazy reviewer comments that we have to address. Or we submit grant proposals. We put in our best preliminary data and those grants are reviewed and are rejected and have to be resubmitted or come back asking for revisions. So one of the things that I have to spend a lot of time in my lab doing is encouraging my graduate students to push back <laughs> from the lab bench and to think about not those trees, but the forest. The forest for my graduate students and myself is that we are such blessed individuals. We have an opportunity to spend our days thinking of ways to cure cancer. What an opportunity. So how are we different and how are we similar to you? Well, I think you have your own trees. I've never organized a Relay for Life event, but I've attended them, and I can only imagine that your trees have to be the probably thousands of phone calls that you make to raise money for the American Cancer Society, the hundreds of meetings that you attend to organize volunteers, to organize corporate donors. The day of logistics boggle the mind for a Relay for Life. I, what if the snacks don't show up? What if it rains? Did anybody order clipboards? I imagine that sometimes it can be very difficult for you to see the forest. But your forest is the exact same forest that I have. So right now, look around you. Together, you, the volunteers of the American Cancer Society, are making an enormous impact in the way that we diagnose, in the way that we treat, and together, all of you make a difference. All of you are helping all of us to cure cancer. So thank you. And now, I do think, though, that there is one way that you, the volunteers of the American Cancer Society, are very different from me as a researcher for the American Cancer Society. I think about cancer all the time. I plan experiments related to cancer. I write papers and read manuscripts about cancer. But I get paid to be a cancer researcher. It is my job. I'd like to think I would do it for free, but I don't. It's how I pay my bills, and it's how I feed my family. And this makes me very different from you, because you have your own careers, jobs that you're interested in and excited about, you have your families that you are very involved in, community efforts, churches that you participate in, and even so, you, at night and on weekends, spend your time raising money for the American Cancer Society. And so, on behalf of every scientist who has ever been funded by the American Cancer Society, ever will be funded by the American Cancer Society, I would like to say thank you. Together, we are changing the way that we diagnose, the way that we treat, and together, we are going to cure cancer. So, thank you, thank you. I have one last comment that I'd like to make to you. And it's really a plea that you make 2012 your best fundraising effort yet. And this is why. So part of being an American Cancer Society researcher, part of my job is that I've been asked to review other grants that are submitted by other scientists who have ideas and would like to be funded by the American Cancer Society. So twice a year, I receive a big stack of grants. There are usually about 10 of them and I am asked to read them and rank them as good to outstanding. And then twice a year, I meet with scientists from all over the country. Um, we meet in Atlanta, which is convenient for me, not convenient for a whole lot of other people, but, um, and we go to something called a study section. And at that study section, there are about 30 scientists, and we sit around and we talk about those grants and that research, and we rank then all of those grants from good to outstanding, and we make funding decisions that we then relay to the leadership of the American Cancer Society. And that process is thrilling. It is always so exciting to see the new ideas and the new science that is being proposed. But it is also, I think, one of the worst parts of my job as an American Cancer Society researcher, because inevitably, among that stack of outstanding grants will be grants that are not funded, because there's just not enough money. 
And so it worries me because I worry that that research that is going to change the way that we diagnose, the way that we treat, and eventually cure cancer could be in one of those outstanding but unfunded grants. And so I would really like to make a deal with you this year. If you will promise me that you will work hard and make this your best year ever, I will promise you that every dollar that you raise towards research is well used. We are a team. Together, help me now. We are going to change the way that cancer is diagnosed. We're going to change the way that cancer is treated. And what are we going to do? We are going to cure cancer. Thank you. Thank you.